Greetings, everybody. This is vlog number four. Um, it has today is January 18. Um, it has been exactly a month since the last vlog. Um, I know the last ones kind of came rapid fire. Um, things kind of slowed down a little bit in the process, and so therefore the vlogging has slowed down as well. Um, but anyway, uh, things are picking back up again, and uh, so I just wanted to pick up with where we left off and bring you to where we are now. Um, so yes, it's been about four weeks, um, and the what's great is that the entire band at this point um, is in communication. I mean, the communication lines are flowing. This is feeling like a group project. We have a, uh, a group chat on Messenger right now uh, with most of the band members um, all chiming in and just kind of hanging out together, which is great. Um, and Father Joseph has been checking in uh, with me um, just about every day. Um, so he's up to speed with everything. He's very excited with what's going on. Um, and so, uh, I guess this, that's kind of been so far, that's been the part that I think has been the best of this project is, uh, old friends getting together, um, and, uh, kind of getting their relationships, uh, up to speed and getting to know each other a little bit better. And as we all kind of pull together to get this thing, um, rolling. So again, Mino has continued to put uh, some more video and audio and things up, which is cool. He's putting some uh, some links on that. And uh, Ernie, in anticipation of the uh, getting the tracks to do this Vibraflux project, um, he actually went back and pulled up uh, the last project that he and Eric worked on uh, which was Sfumato, a album that was done by the Alexis Wax, <clears throat> which was the last thing that they had done. Uh, it's an excellent album. What's interesting is that's an album that my brother had always wanted um, to have to play to people to kind of show what he was doing um, back in his drumming days, since he no longer does that anymore. Um, he was really hoping uh, to have that. He didn't really have a copy of that. Um, and the copy that I had <clears throat> was, uh, unplayable. I had a copy that, uh, that I had here at the house, um, and that was unplayable. So for years, we just didn't have that. And, uh, Ernie was able to pull up a copy of that and actually remaster that and really add some shine to it. It sounds better than it had before. Uh, and he posted that. And so my brother was able to share that with some friends and family and that kind of thing. Now, it didn't last long on the Internet um, on account of, uh, I guess, the other guys in the band uh, really weren't ready to have that posted. So um, unfortunately, that had to be taken back down again. But it was up long enough um, for uh, for him to be able to share that with some folks. And hopefully that will come out again. Uh, and see the light of day, because that's that's some good music um, that's on there, for sure. So that was a whole other thing that came out of this project that we weren't really planning on. Um, and so a lot of just really good positive things um, has been happening. What's kind of interesting is that uh, when all that was going on, um, when I was trying to upload some of these vlogs, I was on uh, my computer and found my old uh, Calico 9 uh, demo that we had recorded at Classic Studio in Bristol. So I pulled that up and it actually uh, aged pretty well. And so uh, my brother said he had never heard the, the EP that we put together, the demo, and that we'd actually gone in the studio to record. So I went ahead and sent that to him and uh, he really enjoyed that. So that got me to thinking, um, as we do this, um, we should really, you know, put together a, a page for Vibra Flux. Have the new album, have some of the old four-track recordings, have some pictures and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, anything that you guys want to write and add to that. And do the same thing with the Calico 9. 
Um, I know that uh, Jimmy and I have been talking about that, Jimmy in particular, um, in relation to the larger picture, which is the music scene uh, in Johnson City and the Tri-Cities. So that's something, you know, hopefully that that will, will come together um, as well. Uh, plus, Ernie and I have had some good conversations. Um, I've never really had a chance to talk at length with Ernie. Um, and uh, I do feel that there is um, a bit of a kindred spirit there. Um, we talked about, uh, you know, music in general and uh, recording particularly. Um, also on the um, chat, we had some good uh, bass discussion with Bo. Um, there's been discussion about different concerts that uh, we've been going to and uh, projects that everybody's involved with, uh, podcasts, uh, recommendations, and that kind of thing. And so, uh, again, just some good camaraderie there, uh, including, um, you know, again, as Ernie was getting uh, antsy about getting these tracks, uh, he started to kind of come together with a good game plan, a workflow, how uh, he would like to tackle this as far as mixing and distributing and all that kind of thing. We've even had some discussions about artwork, um, what kind of artwork that we want to involve. You know, we've had some discussions about that. I know Father Joseph has some interesting um, and good um, ideas to do. So these are all things that have been going on in the last four weeks. I won't get into a whole lot of detail there um, other than to say that things are, are, are really kind of coming together. And uh, when I pulled up that Calico 9 stuff too, as a, and as a side, um, I went over and kind of, uh, I guess, rebooted my friendship with Brian Qualls. It's been several years since I've actually uh, gone over to see him. And I went over to see him and, and, uh, and gave him the, uh, the demo tape. He hadn't listened to the demo tape really in years, lost his copy of it. So he was very happy to have that. Um, and he's very excited about all this. In fact, um, he was made a very uh, uh, strong, pointed comment uh, that he wants to make sure that he gets a good copy of Booberry. I guess that's his favorite song. So we need to make sure that uh, that he gets a, gets a copy of that. And um, anyway, so the rest of the, 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 the four weeks has really just been everybody just kind of being anxious. We don't know what kind of shape the tape is going to be in. You know, is it workable? Is it not? Do we have a project? Do we not have a project? How long is it going to take? Um, I estimated, personally, I estimated four to eight weeks, just kind of managing my own expectations. And, um, you know, sure enough, almost four weeks to the day, I get a uh, an email from Chris. Actually, it was an invoice um, that I got. And uh, I looked at it. I didn't see anything on there that uh, indicated that we had a problematic tape fee or anything, because I thought for sure they were going to have to work with this thing big time. And I emailed Chris. I said, is this right? He said, yeah, man. He said, we had no problems whatsoever. So that was music to my ears. So after having sat for this long in a rundown house with um, going through several cycles of freezing and thawing and water damage and rodents and everything else, uh, they were able to get a good clean pass apparently and have gone ahead and digitized it. So we now have a digitized uh, copy of the tapes and they arrived just today. So this is the unboxing. This is what I have. I've not opened this, so I'm, this is a first. So we're gonna see together what all of these weeks have amounted to so far. Okay, this, this part looks familiar. Oh man, you, I can still smell the, the mildew on this. <laughs> All right, let's pull this apart one thing at a time here. All right, 
Here's a tape reel. This is the tape reel from uh, the project. This is uh, this one doesn't say Vibroflux on it, but you can see they've they've put a new label on it. And according to this label, uh, welcome to 1979 tape transfer notes. Um, they've logged this reel, so this um, since they've logged this, they have records of this now at the studio. So if this reel ever comes back to the studio, they'll know exactly what they did with this, um, what progress they had. Uh, in this case, um, it says that they baked it 24 by 24. Not sure exactly what that means. 24 hours twice. I, I have no idea. But anyway, um, this has been baked. Um, this is CA16B2 is the log number and the real number. <clears throat> and it is backed up uh, and transferred. So transferred, I had them put... Uh, make two thumb drives, one for me um, and these tapes, another for Ernie, since he's going to be the one that is going to be mixing all this. And I had his sent directly to him. And then I've got the other one. And of course, they are encouraging us to make as many copies as these of these thumb drives as we can so that, um, you know, we'll have backups. Uh, we won't have to worry about that. But in any case, they do keep a backup at uh, welcome to 1979 for two weeks. So if anything happens to those or we run into any problems or we need anything, they at least have that backed up for two weeks in case something happens, you know, shipping, whatever. So anyway, so that's this tape. Oh, and here's the other... This one says, same thing. Okay, so this is B1. So this is real one. I would say that this is real one. Um, so we've got that. And what else here? And inside of the tape is this. This is it. This is your project. 16 reels, uh, 16 reels, 16 tracks, eight songs, this thumb drive. We went from this behemoth, two of those, to this. Times have changed. In fact, I got to thinking about this today, as a matter of fact. What exactly has transpired since you guys recorded this stuff? And I got to thinking, man, okay, you guys recorded this back in 1996. Um, what's happened since 19, 1996? Funny you should ask. Here are a few things that have happened since you recorded this tape. This tape has been laying dormant this long. You guys recorded this before Princess Diana's death. Seriously, 1997 was Princess Diana's death. These tapes have been laying around since before the very first Mars rover. Our first Mars rover, Pathfinder, you guys recorded this before then. Um, Hong Kong hadn't even been handed back to China. Uh, the movie Titanic came out after you recorded this. Um... Comet Haley Bop and the uh, Heaven's Gate cult, the people who tried to jump onto the comet by killing themselves, because I guess that makes sense. That happened after you guys recorded this. When you recorded this, there was no such thing as the Clinton Monica Lewinsky scandal. That's how old this is. In fact, Viagra hadn't even been approved by the FDA at that point. And the founding of Google happened after you recorded these tapes. Seinfeld ended after you recorded these tapes. You guys recorded these tapes before the very first Harry Potter book was ever written. Now, we're not talking about the movies. We're talking about the Harry Potter book. Windows 98 was released 
after these were recorded. The introduction of the euro, yes, the euro, which is the common uh, monetary unit in Europe, didn't exist. Okay, I could go on and on. I mean, Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife and sister-in-law, plane crash. That wasn't for another few years. That was 1999. Um, the Y2K craze. Okay, so this, this part, the Y2K craze, is interesting because I was actually celebrating uh, the millennium in Arkansas. And I was on my way back from Arkansas to our house here in Johnson City. And I stopped in to visit um, well, he was Nathaniel at that point, um, at the commune in Liberty. So, uh, that's the first time that I had actually been, and I had been out there in the woods of Tennessee, uh, to pretty much where these tapes rested. Um, that was in really the January of 2000. So these tapes have been sitting since the January, since January of 2000. The, um, MySpace, didn't come along till 1999. The release of Napster, 1999. Here's the thing. While um, uh, old Lars Ulrich was out there pretty much lobbying to have 15-year-old girls uh, incarcerated because they were downloading Metallica songs, while he was busy doing that, you guys had figured out the best way to keep people from pirating your music was to actually stack it in a closet where they couldn't access it. You guys were ahead of the curve as far as, um, oh, what do you want to call it? Uh, cyber security. So there you go. First cruise to the International Space Station, the Concorde crash, the final Peanuts comic. That Peanuts was still alive and well and going uh, when you guys recorded this. Mad cow disease hadn't happened, was, was off on the horizon. 9-11, iTunes didn't exist, uh, the Afghanistan war hadn't even started. I mean, you guys recorded this before there was a do not call list. There was no such thing as a do not call list. So, come on. Here it is. So, I have these reels because apparently, you know, I don't know, in the future we may need to get a higher resolution and we may need to put on something a little bit smaller than this. I, I have no idea. But I have the reels. I have this. And um, so we're ready to go to the next level. That's it. That's all that's really in the box. Um, no fanfare. Um, I thought maybe they would have some kind of write-up or something in here. But that's about it. Anyway, thank you all for your patience. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to be going down to Spruce Pine, to Jimmy Hinshaw's place, to listen to this. And maybe we can set up a live stream or something like that. Um, so maybe you guys can join us for our little listening party. Um, or at least we can record it and you guys can watch it later. But anyway, exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Tune in next time.